Hello and welcome to Winging It. So this is part two in my new series where I look at building engines in each of the three habitats in Wingspan. So if you haven't seen part one, I recommend checking it out. There'll be a link in the description. Um, but in part one, we looked at how to build a strong engine in the forest. Uh, and today, this is part two, we'll be looking at the grasslands. So you'll see in my hand, um, got a very favourable start here with both the killdeer and the chihuahua raven. Um, so for those of you who haven't experienced these birds yet, uh, these are two of the strongest birds in the game. Uh, in the recent wingspan tier list that I did with Tuck and Cash over on his channel, you know, these are two of the top four birds in the game, um, bona fide S tier birds. So they're kind of crucial to, to building a strong grasslands engine. Um, and as soon as you see even one of these two birds, let alone two, uh, in your starting hand, then definitely you can you can look to build something strong in the grasslands. Uh, the only real decision for me at this point is, do I keep any of the other birds? Um, so the Martin is obviously really strong as well, particularly with the Kildeer. You know, the Kildeer is giving you cards and then the Martin allows you to tuck those and draw even more cards. So you're getting points and you're seeing more cards in the deck. Uh, it's just so such a strong combination to have. Um, but even the other two cards in the hand, you know, the blue heron and the eagle, those are exactly the kind of birds you want to be drawing with the kill deer, because uh, you can get the food so easy with the raven. Uh, um, the the heron in particular with the double bird power that it has, allowing you to play two birds at once. Uh, it's so strong when you know you you can easily get food. Uh, your turns are limited in wingspan, so to be able to make the most out of a uh, single turn by playing two birds at once it really can help you know maximize your score potential um, but really I think you know when you have birds like this at the start um, you have to prioritize getting them down as soon as possible um, so you can really start working on the engine so yeah in the end I do choose to just keep the two of them um, you know I'll be activating that kill deer a lot it's gonna get me two cards every time so I'm feeling pretty confident that I'll be able to get some good birds uh, you know as the game goes on. So just a little bit of um, you know, basic strategy with these two. Um, in general I would advise to not do what I've done here um, if possible. So really you want the raven down first before the kill deer. Uh, and the reason for that is when you're activating the powers you do them from right to left. So you want to be activating your kill deer first so you can draw cards and then once you've seen those cards uh, you can then activate the raven and get the right food for uh, for those birds to play them. So you will see a couple of times in this game, um, you know, I do pick up a nice bird with a kill deer after I've already drawn different food with the raven. So it just takes you know that one extra turn to get those birds down. Um, but you know, it's it was worth it. I think in this case, obviously being able to draw the puffin. Uh, you know, if I'd played the raven first and laid eggs, I wouldn't have been able to activate that raven's power. So it just got me a couple of extra cards there with the kill deer, um, and the puffin is absolutely a nice one. You know, getting that fish is going to be really easy. Um, meets the bonus card, has a star nest, and it's going to give me another bonus card as well. So um, yeah, this is exactly the kind of bird that you want to that you want you want to be drawing with the kill deer. And here's the first example of um, you know the perils of having the kill deer and the raven the wrong way around. Uh, I did draw the barn swallow and had no grubs, and so it took one extra turn here. To get that grub, um, which is unfortunate, but yeah, it's it's only really one point that I've missed out on there by by not being able to get that extra tuck on the barn swallow. I'll still look to get it down uh, for the same reasons as as I talked about with the purple martin uh, in the starting hand. Um, but in many ways, the barn swallow is better because it has that star nest. So um, you'll see it allows me to win this first end of round goal, um, and, and with all those other end of round goals as well. Um, it's certainly going to help me at least compete in those. Um, so you'll see I keep drawing really nice cards here with the kill deer. Um, this doesn't always happen, but yeah, Catbird absolutely is uh, is such a great card. Um, it's just flexible, so if I get that down I can choose, you know, do I want to copy the Swallow and get more tucks and more points? Um, or, or you know, do I have a lot of cards that I want to play and actually I need more food? Um, a prime example of that being the Great Egret that I've just drawn. So again, for the same reasons as the Blue Heron that I talked about with the starting hand, 
you know, this is exactly the kind of bird you want. You know, if I can get that bird down with the puffin, that's 15 bird points in a single turn, um, plus the bonus card that I'm going to get from that puffin. So, ordinarily, pulling off a move like that, it's so difficult because it's it's six food, and getting six food, it can take a number of turns. Whereas, you know, with the raven, it's only going to take a few turns, and I'm actively gaining points and gaining more cards while I'm activating that. Um, and I can even choose to use the catbird, so if I wanted to I could I could copy that raven's power uh, and get four food in a single turn, which is just so strong and you know certainly looking at some of these other cards I've got the swan, um, some of those other big point birds that are either going to get me a lot of points or, or a bonus card as well, you know that's going to take a lot of food to get all those down. Um, so I'll need to think carefully. Um, and yeah, really, you know, having a setup like this, it is so strong, but you can't just go on autopilot. You do still have to think about what you're doing. You have to think carefully about, okay, you know, which birds do I want to prioritize, um, and in what order as well. So, you know, something like the Vireo, I think for me, is important to get down now because it's got that star nest. Um, and luckily, it does reveal a nice bonus card, so I'm just checking. Um, and, and I do have the swan that I mentioned before that is now going to meet that omnivore expert and also the wetland scientist that I've already got. Um, so it just gives me even more reasons to play that bird. Um, and in general, that omnivore expert is is one of the strongest bonus cards in the game. Um, so again, another tier list video that was on Takakashi's channel recently um, was, was the two of us looking at all the bonus cards and ranking them based on their point scoring potential. I'm an absolutely omnivore expert is is by far one of the stronger ones. Um, it's just so flexible, and most of the strongest birds in the game will uh, will eat that wild food. So you can see the raven that I've already got down, um, and and of course the the nine point swan that is now an eleven point swan in my hand. So yeah, it's it's such a nice bonus card, and it has no cap. So you know, in theory, I could get you know as many points as I wanted from that if I can draw the right birds. So. Yeah, really, really strong bonus card. So at this point, I'm just you know double checking what I've got in my hand. Um, you know, I've got a lot of bird cards, and I do keep activating the kill deer. Uh, at some point, I will want to think about uh, retiring that kill deer because it is costing eggs, and obviously every egg that I can save for the end of the game is going to be worth a point. So it's just going to help out the the score there. Um, but yeah, I think as long as I'm copying that. Barn Swallow's power. I'm still seeing two cards a turn and getting those tuck points, so um, absolutely, I could still keep cycling through the deck at a reasonable rate and see lots of new cards. But yeah, I'm I'm kind of looking at where I am in the game now and and already starting to think, okay, I've got probably enough birds that I can uh, you know think about playing these. But still, it doesn't hurt to to use that Swallow's power. As I said, you get the points. But also, you know, I might draw some some even stronger birds um, that maybe synergize better with my bonus cards, um, or or are going to help me get even more bonus cards later. So you will see that I did skip the kill deer, so I decided this was about the right time to do it, um, just for all the reasons I said before. But yeah, I think with an engine like this, um, it is so important to be able to fit nicely with the end of round goals. So. Obviously with a grassland engine, um, you're going to be getting a lot of eggs naturally just by activating your habitat. So uh, I lucked out here certainly with the end of round goals for this setup. So all of them featuring eggs um, and different nest types, but I've got a couple of star nests. Um, and certainly by that last round, uh, I should be looking to have enough birds in each of the three habitats to really be able to max that out. So yeah, you'll see there, thanks to the Viria that I did get down, um, I was able to I get a turn that end of our goal. Now, Santor Grains come up, which, first of all, Omnivore Bird, so it's going to meet the bonus card. Um, but secondly, this is just, you know, it's such a game changer when you've got a bird like the Raven. Um, you know, you're getting lots of food from the Raven, uh, and you can use that excess food. Um, that's going to turn into points with the crane, so yeah, you will see, again, skipping the kill did, but I did choose to copy the Raven with the Catbird's power. So that's just given me a lot of seeds there. Um, which I'll be able to use with the Sandor Crane um, to score even more points. So, yeah, absolutely prioritise getting that crane down. And then I can even think about using that catbird to start copying the crane's power. Um, 
you know, it will use two seeds a turn, but I can gain those back with the Raven, so uh, it's just such a huge point scoring engine. Um, obviously, egg space will become a little bit of a problem for me. Um, after this turn, I might only have a couple left, uh, but you'll see I keep drawing nice birds, so the woodcock come up, um, as well as all of those other really strong birds that I'm just sort of flicking back to look at. Um, but yeah, I've got to be careful what food I take, um, just making sure I have enough. Certainly, I think getting that egret down with the puffin. I think that's going to be so crucial just for that wetland side is bonus card um, and then I can look to add the swan on top of that as well to, to meet the omnivore so yeah you'll see I've, I've got quite a lot of strong birds and it's kind of difficult decisions really to work out okay you know which ones do I need to get down which one should I prioritize to to really maximize the points but you see I have gone for the egret and the puffin now um, and that's given me the cartographer which works with the woodcock that I just drew um, I was just looking through my hand to see you know, is there anything else in there that could potentially work? But um, you know, that's a, that's a nice pull on the on the bonus card. Woodcock is a bird I was already really looking at playing, uh, but now it's going to be worth four extra points, getting that second threshold on the bonus card. So yeah, it's it's going to be such a strong play for me uh, as we go towards the end of this game. But yeah, that's helped free up some egg space as well with the eager and the puffin, so I can afford to lay eggs probably a couple more times here. Um, and yeah, you see, you copying that power on the crane. I'm getting four tucks a turn from that, uh, plus another one on the swallow, as well as the eggs that I get from laying eggs. So it's it's such a huge point scoring move. Um, and all the while I'm doing that, whilst also cycling through some cards, um, and I can really start to think about okay, which of these birds do I prioritize to get down? I think obviously the swan and the woodcock are, are kind of the the two I'm really looking at. Um, but I have got some nice bonus card giving birds, so you see I've got the woodpecker there that I'm looking at. Um, and I think I've also got the spotted owl, so I've got a couple of options. Um, and certainly, you know, when you've got a lot of birds down, uh, and in particular a lot of star nest birds, I think you can certainly justify going for that bonus card, because um, there's a really strong chance that uh, you're going to get some big points from that. So um, I'll always look to look to play bonus card birds. Uh, whenever I'm, I've got an engine like this, just because the point scoring potential is is so high, um, and you know, I would like to run this engine more. Um, like I said, it's it's going to score me, you know, seven, eight, nine points a turn, which is huge. Um, but X space is is sort of the limiting factor. So if I can score seven or eight points from this engine, and then score another eight points from playing a bird on the next turn, you know, I don't really have too much to complain about there. Um, so you see we are going into the last round now um, and I'm already pretty much on 100 points um, which would be a, a really strong score at the end of the game um, let alone at the end of round 3 so you see I did play the spotted owl there and yeah food web expert really nice um, I do have the warbler as well that fits that um, so it's the kind of bird where potentially I would look at playing that but I just think I'm, I'm a little bit short on turns you know I really need to get that swan down and I need to get that woodcock down for the other bonus card I had so with only four turns left uh, you know time is time is running out a little bit um, so I'm not sure I will quite have time to play that but uh, you know as I said I can still score a lot of points um, just from laying eggs and uh, activating that crane's power so that's going to be really strong um, but yeah, one one important thing when you do have a situation like this is to just sort of count your food and make sure you've got the right thing. So just looking there, I've got two grubs and a seed for the woodcock. Um, and then I've got another two seeds and the wild food being the cherry for my, um, for my swan. So at this point I'm thinking, okay, I can play both of these um, and that's still going to give me enough food for the crane. So with three turns left, I can lay eggs twice. I can use the catbird to copy the crane's power twice um, and then the raven's going to give me that food back so each turn I'm losing those two seeds to the crane but gaining two back from the raven so I'll know that when it comes to that last turn my food is good, still going to be the same um, I can get that that swan down so yeah I just think in situations like this if you can you know double check your food make sure you've got the right amount um, you know, I don't like having any food left over at the end of the game. Um, it it always feels like, you know, missed potential. Uh, whether that food is turned into tuck cards in the case of the crane, or maybe turned into extra eggs by discarding. 
um, or you know more obviously turned into points by playing birds um, I'll always like to to maximize that out and yeah it, it it's always nice when you can end a game with either no cards or no food or both um, just because you really feel like you've you've maximized everything you've not wasted turns um, you know maybe I could have in hindsight stopped using the kill to a couple of turns earlier um, when I did get all of those strong cards I think I probably had enough to, to play them all but you know sometimes you gamble and, and, and get stronger cards anyway so it can be worth it um, but yeah you'll see as I was saying um, managed to lay eggs twice and on the final turn I do have enough for the swan uh, fortunately I do end up tying this last end around just because I spent that extra turn um, laying eggs before the swan went down but I got more points from the tucks on the crane so I'm not too bothered about losing the the points on the end around so yep yeah, you'll see as the points start counting up um, you'll really get an idea of what the sort of breakdown of points you can expect uh, for a grasslands engine so you are going to get a lot of bird points and bonus points and particularly if you can get some of those double birds um, and big bonus point giving birds but really you know good number of eggs um, and thanks to cards like the barn swallow uh, and obviously the crane as well at the end um, you know really maxing out on those tuck cards and 152 is, is such a strong score um, and certainly you know the score this would be so difficult to achieve, particularly in the grasslands, if you didn't have either one of the kill deer or raven. Uh, you kind of need at least one. Um, and you know, if you get a nice start like I did and get both, then you're in luck. And uh, yeah, you can really maximise the potential. You know, this game isn't all about just drawing the right cards, it's about knowing how to use them. So um, I've seen many games where players have, have got these birds early on but not really maximised their potential um, and yeah I, hopefully this has been useful to some of you uh, particularly those who haven't come across these birds before um, so now you'll know next time you get them early in the game how to play with them and how to score big so yep thank you very much for watching um, as I said this is a three part series so make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you get notified when that part three comes out